Yo, what's going on guys? Today we have another video. I'm so tired. I just woke up, so if if you feel me to be a little bit out of it, that's probably why. Anyways, today we have part two, as I mentioned, to the premium gal banner. One thing I'll mention, I was actually wrong. I thought they would, I assumed that there was a possibility they would add a new uh, Lake Fest Limited. Nope, that did not happen, unfortunately. But let's take a look at the banner. So this banner is a little bit weird. Um, it has a double SSR rate up, two new characters. So first we have Stan and Lisa. So rate up characters. Um, so we have Stan and Aliza. So I don't, I took a look at their kits, right? Um, I don't want to give too much opinion on them, but they seem to base around Ogi and bonus damage, kind of like Yule. Um, so I don't know how viable they'll be. I, I don't have any experience with them, right? So, so we got Stan and Aliza, non-limited. So yeah, I'm looking at their kit. I took a little little glimpse at it. I'll look at it again, but I believe their kit was around bonus damage, so I can't give too much opinion on it. Also, if you have either of them in the party, um, you can't use this character and vice versa. So if you, I mean, they're wind, so there's no Stan or Aliza in uh, wind. I think one of them are in dark, and then two of them are in fire. So this should be fine. Oh, one of them else in water. It's, you should be fine, but um, just in case people didn't know that. And then we have a new character as well, a brand new character, Tabina. Now, Tabina looks kind of cool, actually. Um, I'll talk more about her when we get to her, but she looks kind of cool. I like, I like her kit. Kind of reminds me of Urius for fire, I guess. Um, it's pretty cool, pretty cool. And our next rate up is Rackham. Rackham's gun is a rate up. So this is a big one. And to be honest, I don't know. <laughs> um, limited. Rackham rate, Rackham's gun is rate up. So most people probably won't get much value out of the gun personally. So it's kind of a big thing when it comes to sparking its banner. As you're sparking a banner with a rate up that you really don't want to roll into. So... It's kind of messed up. It, it's not even good as a one-off. It used to be good as a one-off for me mechanic, but thanks to the rise, the rise of the beast weapon, it's kind of lost that value. Um, so it's kind of hard for me to recommend already on this banner just because of Rackham being right up. And we have a new summon, Surter. Surter from, um, I, think that's, I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, Surter from uh, Fire Emblem Heroes has now joined into grand blue fantasy to blow up another game so let's go take a look now i'm actually going to be looking at the additional weapons so there's a couple things i want to note in additional weapons so we have two zodiacs in this banner two zodiacs which depending on how you look at it it's a good or bad thing um generally i think you want more two zodiacs um we have vanilla and come come back. so i've seen a lot of people mention this in the previous video of asking if Anilla is going to be back in a banner. So I'm going to try to keep track of, of Zodiacs more often. Um, it, do forgive me if I like mess up or something, but I'm going to try to keep track of, of Zodiacs over time to see when they're going to rotate in and rotate out. But we do have two Zodiacs out of, what, four potential, the other two being Monkey um, and My Hero. So we don't have them right now. I don't know if they ever do more than two Zodiacs in a banner. I never I never personally kept track of Zodiacs, but if you guys, I may go look at this after I'm done recording this video, but to my knowledge, I don't know if they ever did more than two Zodiacs per banner besides the first banner of the year. Generally what they do is they add a new unit, is what they do, they add a new um, Zodiac, then they'll add a new full limit break Zodiac, and then you have the current Zodiac of the year, I believe. So uh, I think that's how it goes. I could be wrong, um, but I don't know if they add uh, Zodiacs, multiple of them. We're also gonna put this back a little bit because this the two Zodiacs. Um, 
Uh, also, I don't know if they have a rate up. I need, I need to check if they have rate up too. So, rate up. Summons. Ooh. Just don't look at that link. I don't even know what that link's to, but you don't look at it. <laughs> I don't know what it's to. Hey, if you guys want to look it up. You may see some loot. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what the link is too, to be honest. I'm about to copy and paste it something. But, hell if I know. Okay, so these are the rate-ups you have. Um, so I'm expecting Sir to have a 0 .05 rate. Um, Stan, Eliza, and Tabina. Um, I'm expecting their rates to be around 3.5, I guess. I, I haven't looked at this, right? Even though I am a little bit late on recording this, I'm about, you see the time here. I'm a couple hours late. I think it I think it came online at 11 p.m. my time, but I was I fell asleep to be honest. I was tired. I was like, uh, I'll just sleep and we'll give it some time. Uh, I wanted to get a little bit more info on the um the summon. Another thing I want to mention is that it's not limited. The reason I'm saying it not limit or not non ticketable. Let me. I need to stop saying um not ticketable. Yeah. So I got to stop saying limited. I realized that not many players understand what limited stands for as a new player. So we're gonna call them non-ticketable. So non-ticketable means that they you cannot surprise ticket them. So we're gonna he's not non-ticketable. As the reason you can tell generally is if you go to available items here, if the summon is generally in this area, they're usually ticketable unless it's a seasonal like summer summon like uh, Rose Queen. If it's just some, if this is a summer summon, then it's different. But generally, anything that's in this area, any other time of the year, you can surprise ticket them. Generally, um, there's only been one time that rule has been broken, and that's with Lucifer during the fifth anniversary. So it's only been broken one time. But general rule of thumb, if it's there, you can surprise ticket them. But until we have a surprise ticket, uh, a surprise ticket. Again, I cannot guarantee you can ticket him. So we're gonna take a little quick look at the actual um, characters. Now, my thoughts on each character, I'm not gonna go too in depth on them because I don't wanna talk about a unit, but uh, talk about a unit I don't have. But we're looking here, we're looking at Saber, Melee unit, which is pretty okay. Saber and Melee, pretty okay for when? Do you have like Monkey, uh, Lesia, Monaka, Siete, options like that. It's not that bad. Um, so they do give bonus wind damage effect to the, to them, and then based on the steel and dust, they gain more bonus wind damage. So they, they are based around Ogying, unfortunately. Um, but they have the same problem as Duel. Use another unit based around Ogying, and you can see how well she did. So just keep that in mind. They do have strength buff. I don't know if that's to the party or just to them. Uh, six hits of uh, wind damage to a foe, or third caster to HP. Um, so they have healing, huh? Boost the healing specs upon each cast. So they, they, they heal probably like around 3k, I guess. A 3k heal to themselves. So they have high hostility. Um, the healing is great and all, but they have to have high hostility to like to warrant needing a heal. Wind damage to a foe, boost to one foe attack damage. So they get a higher damage cap on autos. Attack twice per turn, twice per turn, it's like sun. Um, or sixes, skill four. Or dancer. Debuff immunity, well, that's really good. Debuff immunity is very valuable. But they, st I, don't, I don't see anything about them having higher hostility up. Maybe in their EMPs. They look like they wanna be hit. I cannot guarantee. So if they get a boost of charge attack damage based on how high HP is. Hmm. If they have they want to have high HP, then they don't want to get hit. They have strength modifier too. Hmm. Re really weird unit. I mean, generally units with healing, they, they have to have some reason to be healing themselves rather than healing the party, right? If, if they're going to just heal themselves, it's not nearly as good unless they're getting a lot of aggro. Steel and Dust level rises upon triple attacks. Oh, so they have the same passive of Europa where they gain stacks based on uh, triple attacking. Wind has a very high triple attack, so that's, a, that's not bad. You'll have, Like with Monkey and Neo, you'll have really high triple attacks. Mm, I don't know how I feel about them personally. I don't know what content you would run them in right now. Just looking at their kit. They don't seem like to be fit easily. 
Um, you may be able to do a sword, a sword team with Lesia. They do have skill damage, right? They have two skills, so you may be able to to do some type of Lesia sword comp and do a burst from there. If you if you're like tied to Monkey and Neo, that may be an option for people who who want to use Lesia and not have to run the same standard bread and butter combo. But outside of that, I don't really see much value in them. They are surprise ticketable, so you know if you don't have to like really wail in a banner for them. There's not something I would actually go for on the banner. Uh, let's. How do you go back? I think you hit draw. Yeah, draw. Okay. So that's my feelings on them. Uh, Tabina. So what's we'll he? So this is, character. This is the Urius type character I was talking about. That's kind of reminded me of Urius. Do know see Bo. Bo is okay on fire, but generally not that great. Um, Axe. Hmm. Axe is, hmm. I think, only character I think of fire and Axe is Adios, right? I can't really think of many Axe units in fire, so. The Akasha weapon not looking too easy to, to use. Uh, actually, no, you can run the Akasha bow, right? Because you have Esther and her. So, you know, you can, you can, you can actually run the Akasha bow, kind of. But, um, I don't know if they give critical, if you give critical damage, though. You do need, you do get guaranteed criticals from Esther, though. And that's for three turns. So, uh, it's, it's possible. You, you, you can probably make it, you can make it work, I think. Um, I don't know if it would be, like, optimal or viable or anything, but, you know, you have an option. So, her Ogi extends the duration of a buff, it looks like. Or a debuff. Boost the specs. Okay, so it's a debuff. So, she extends the duration of her debuff. Okay, so she has a look with debuff of four turns, and her Ogi extends it by two turns. Meaning, it's going to be rather hard to have indefinite. Though, her debuff being six turns is very feasible. Um, eight turns are kind of pushing it, though. You must have really high multi-attack to get eight turns out of it. But I think six turns is going to be the average length of her debuff. And her debuff increases the damage boosted on number of debuffs, meaning that she'll have a higher damage cap. Damage, like damage boosted being, like, um, forfeit. I don't know if it's actually forfeit, but I, but it's something like forfeit. Th there's another, there's another debuff skill. I'm trying to think about it. That's based around number of debuffs. Mm, I don't know. It's not song skill three. That's the one skill, but there's another skill where you get more damage based off of it. I can't think of it at the top of my head. Four hits to fire damage to a foe, hit to attack and defense stackable. <laughs> So this is where I got the effect from Urius because it's zero turns, meaning that you can spam it four turns and four times in one turn. As she does have a limit though, as it removes her hunter arrow. Yeah, here it is, hunter arrows. So it does remove hunter arrows. Um, so at maximum, you can only cast about four per turn, though what you could probably do is cast four, then refill and then cast four again. But just being able to cast four, I don't know the the percent on her stackable, though if her stackable is 40% down, that's really good for people who may want to use this character for something like um, Yubaha Fire Solo. Um, maybe a very good unit for Yubaha Fire Solo if you're looking to get a fire clear. Uh, you know, maybe fire your main LD and you've been trying to struggle with fire. This may be a good character for you if you're really looking for a fire solo. <clears throat> so I don't know what her full, fully what her skill 3 does. I know it, it gives a uh, gives her a refill and instant ogi, so that would be an easy way for you to actually gain eight turns out of her skill one, giving her indefinite buff, which is definitely not bad. And I think it is possible maybe to have indefinite buffs on her. Bare minimum, you will have six turns, even with bad multi attack, but it may be possible combined with her skill three. To have indefinite debuff duration, which is really good. Not to mention it does dispel, so that's not bad. Though the the, the turn cooldown is kind of rough, but though it will be six turns, I believe, six turns with the uh, plus variant refill. So she refills four hunter arrows every five turns. Yeah, I mean that looks good to me because um, even though she doesn't have as much spamming as Urius. You don't really spam Yuri's buff that much. Generally, you only cast the four times, then you restack every one turn, every couple turns, one time. Not to mention, she does actual damage opposed to Yuri's.
but this one very big component that people have to keep in mind one element has monkey and one element does not so if you're using this character to debuff she will not be as uh, as um she will not be as accurate as Urius due to monkey existing in wind and that's just a, a element bias thing monkey increases your debuff success rate and fire does not have that um please buff vanilla so that she can do the same thing but currently fire does not have a way to increase your debuff success rate so unfortunately that's a uh, an option hold up is she a bow she was staff no she was spear and staff right hmm because you're probably gonna end up running her and shiva together to get like 50 if she does 40 if not if she does 40 if she does 30 then you'll get 40 but you're probably gonna end up running her and shiva together so it's gonna it's gonna be kind of hard <laughs> instant ca and uh also he's gained boost to critical hit rate based on number of hunter arrows hmm. um i don't think that boost to critical hit rate matters too much but it's okay i guess passionate reunion boost to multi-attack rate based on number of foes debuffs so he gained uh, multi-attack rate boost based on number of foe debuffs i don't know the percent rate on that but I, I think that's okay, personally. So that's my opinion on them. I don't want to go too in-depth on them because I don't have them, so I don't want to talk about units I, you know, I just don't got. But that's like a general rule of thumb. And as I mentioned, Rackham had to rate up, so this is like a make or break, honestly. So the, so this and, um, and this one. Because I know a lot of people are going to be going for an, uh, Nilda. So if you're keeping, you gotta keep that in mind, right? That um, Anella, if you're going for Anella, you may roll into a couple of Rackums, unfortunately. And that's gonna be a big, big downside when it's sparking on its banner, as you're, you're pretty much rolling into something that's pretty much unusable for Magna. Um, it's okay for Agni, but not something I would like actively tell somebody to bar the weapon, so. It's really something you got to keep in mind when you're rolling on its banner. It's purely like a, a way to, to get people who are rolling for Anilla to lose a little bit out of their rolls. Now, next thing we're going to talk about is Surter. The new summon rate up. So, one thing to mention. Let's look at the Astro rate ups actually before we start. I think they did not look at the rate ups. So, let's see here. So, the actual rate ups here are... Point three. Eee, point three is low. Point three? Really? Point three. Ah, I I don't like that. I I'll expect at least point like four. Point three is really low for two new SSRs. That's not good, honestly. Could keep in mind that the the big rate up that was um like the eight way rate up we just had was eight eight weapons and that was point two so it really is unfortunate point five yeah i'm not i'm not too much a fan of that honestly i feel like that, i feel like that's too low for a new unit <laughs> not very likely to roll them because of that Zodiacs do not have a rate up, so um, let's, I just want that to be known. The Zodiacs do not have a rate up, but people are likely to be rolling for the Zodiacs, so. Hmm. So, as I mentioned, Surter. So, this, so for, as far as I know, this is not, this is not surprise tickable. I mean, this, this is surprise tickable, so I don't know if it's going to be or not, but to my knowledge, it should be at the be surprise take it. It does have a lot of value with the sub ability boosting to fire allies fire attack based on number of hellfire crest. This may be more viable with um, double agni, though a double agni is not really something people many people run. But th this is a precedent that will go to other elements that do run double primals and having that boost to elemental attack is 
yeah, the boost to elemental attack is a huge thing when running double primal. This is like a huge power creep. A very, very huge power creep. So, this, um, just keep that in mind when you're looking at the summon. Also, I believe it's callable turn one on Ellie. So, it's pretty strong. Now, Hellfire Crest is not that great on fire currently. There's no real way to abuse it on fire right now. So, it's not something I would go after right now. Just know that you may end up having to surprise ticket this in the future. So, that to keep it in the back of your mind, maybe if you have nothing to surprise ticket, it's not a bad option to surprise ticket one just to ensure the future. Um, cause I could definitely see this being more viable in the future. In the future. So, if you're like, like, man, I don't know what the surprise ticket. I feel like this summons a good example of something that's the surprise ticket. For not now, but for later down the line, you, you know, it looks good for something that's going to happen in the future. Um, other than that, I think that's about it on the banner. All right, this banner's not too big, so that's about it. Now, next thing we're gonna be talking about the next banner. Next banner. So, what, so what we're looking at the next banner is we're looking at Shiva rate up. Possible. So Shiva rate up, wet, full limit, rebake, uh, Shiva bow. So this is a possibility. Um, right before GW, they do have a possibility of dropping Shiva rate up, and with the Shiva bow full limit break. I don't know how viable this is going to actually be in fire meta as fire is very auto heavy, but I do feel like this should be the next banner. Um, as, the, as I mentioned in the last video, I was actually wrong on my banner predictions. So, you know, it, it's not a guarantee I'm going to be right, but this is what I feel is going to be the next banner. Um, I don't know what, uh, what's the event going to be or what character is going to be rate up or if there's going to be a new character or anything. But generally, this is how I feel about what the banner's going to be. So uh, do tell me your guys' opinions, how you guys feel about it. Um, tell me how you want me to, to structure the Zodiacs. Cause I don't know what the next Zodiac's going to be. I got to keep track of them from now on. So I can't tell you what the next Zodiac's going to be. Um, Zodiac, though, p possible. I mean, there's no Zodiac in Flask out, right? So I can't tell you. But I'm going to try to keep track of the Zodiacs for the next Like Fest, which is in... Um, what uh, October so we'll see how it goes from there um, we're gonna call this just a uh, video so thank you guys for watching uh, one thing I'll mention is that I will be doing a princess connect spark in the upcoming days if not today um, on my twitch on my YouTube channel so if you see a stream for princess connect it because I'm sparking for the new units so yeah you may want to come chill if you have questions you can ask me questions here or in the comments but thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys next time Bye.